I'm here with Lucas Hooney with one of the most, well, certainly the most complex and fascinating Grand Prix cars of all time. Tell us what we have here. Well, Delage for a short time was very, very advanced, uh, very complex engine V12 by the engineer Planchon. Uh, what's special about it is that the exhaust uh, comes out through the middle. Right. Uh, it's all roller bearing, something like 3,000 nuts and bolts. This car used to belong to Bob Sutherland. Oh, sure, years. I know Bob. And this is what, a four cam, right? Yes. Four who, cam, twin magneto. How many actually, liters? The, two liters. Two liters. It was wow. a two liter formula before then. The next Delage changed to the 1500 formula. Wow. For a short while, they were very good. They didn't have enough money. They were not reliable. Mr. Delage fired Mr. Planchon in right. favor of Mr. Lorry but it's arguably the first modern Grand Prix in terms of handling center of gravity. Yeah. Wow. And it was always beautifully presented. All engine turned with a blue clear lacquer and impressed even Mr. Ferrari, who at yeah. that time was at the circuit for Alpha with the P2. Right. Well, let's, let's take a look at this engine bay here. It's all engine all turned. All safety wired. Yeah, very but nicely it's done. A it's a two valve, right? Yes. And only two liter. Well, that's, and yep. what's the horsepower on this? About 180, 190. Wow. From two liters in uh, 1924. Absolutely. That's a pretty good. And in 25, then they added superchargers because it couldn't quite be fast enough. Right. So the next one, this is the interim 1924, and the next one in 25, which is Majoub's car, the Rowley car, that has uh, superchargers. And quite low to the ground as well, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the center of gravity, if you see, is extremely yeah. low. And it's a two-man car, even in 24. Yes, riding mechanic uh, was mandatory until, I think, the end of 24. Right. And in 25, it could be that. That's why it was staggered. Right. And there are... The staggering, uh, of course, is so you didn't hit the guy in the elbow. Uh, absolutely. In the face. And there were lovely photos where you actually see, this is in 1924. Oh, these are the, the actual photos. Yes, take a look. at the San Sebastian Grand Prix. There were yeah. four team cars. And uh, these are all the photos. Wow, what a beautiful photo. Look how nice they are. Wow. They're, they're glass slides. Uh, uh, yeah. So the quality. This is with all the competition, yeah. uh, including Bugattis. Uh, you see they were actually quite leading in the, in the times. And look how just how dusty and smoky the road the absolutely roads were. yeah i mean absolutely. You, you got dirty back in these days yeah i mean you know it's so funny we always see these cars so beautifully presented but yeah. look just how rough and greasy and dirty they'd be after a race look at this Look at the wear pattern on the tire. Absolutely, which is, they which didn't is change them every race. No, no, no. <laughs> they kept going. Look at the palm trees. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Fantastic lineup with all the Bugattis as well. They chose small and light riding yeah, mechanics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So they could talk, and that handle is actually so he could stay in there yeah. and, and hold on for his life. When the drivers are fat and the tires are skinny. <laughs> it's a whole different, whole different type. Big fat guy, skinny yeah. tire, now it's the other way around. Absolutely. I well, you're it. not speaking for yourself. Yeah, I'm speaking for myself. Right of the, that's that. Benoit, yeah, yeah. who was killed in the uh, resistance during the war. Yes, yes, I remember reading yeah. that in the book. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes, he was a hero. This yeah. car was driven by René Thomas. It came six in the French Grand Prix, uh, six in San Sebastian. And was it just a little too complex? Yes. That was sort of the problem. Yes. So complex, like the BRM later in the 50s. In, uh, better than that, because the BRM was basically a total failure. Yeah, this yeah. wasn't. It was quite competitive. It was uh, in the lead in practice times, but it just lacked reliability. Yeah. But it was And the fact that it's a five-speed, that was quite rare. It's incredible, and it's the whole handling and everything. It's very yeah. light. And this is Vance and Retard? Yes. Okay. And what are these two buttons? They're a kill switch for what you have two refs, ref counters, okay. one for each bank. Right. And you can actually uh, delete uh, the firing of one bank. It was done to test to make sure oh, there's so, one oh, bank run properly, I see. and yeah, then yeah. the other one, and then yeah, you can see yeah. where they're both firing. Sure, sure. And there's actually a trick when you engage gear for a minute, you push that to right. get the rest further down to get the gear yeah. in. So it's well, let's uh, let's fire it up. And the sound, for many, this 12 cylinder sound, we know that even Mr. Ferrari was impressed when he was there for Alfa Romeo. Ready, Sean? Ready? Yeah. Five. Five grand. Five. I think 
good idea that both banks run at the same rate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is the ignition retarded? That's full advance now. The trot is just a stall, not yeah. the trot. Wow, fantastic. Well, that's a nice piece of history. Thanks for sharing that with us. Very nice. Thank you so much. You.